after about 10, 10 or 11 days, mm -hmm. five games. Uh, rate the, the growth progress so far for you, uh, for you personally. Growth progress? Um, exponential. Exponen exponential, I would say that. Every game we got better, every day we got better. Um, I feel like, you know, we after this, for the first game, we just regrouped and then we won the next four. And then as a unit, we just collectively just connected and, you know, we were able to finish this thing 4-1. And, and for me, I felt like I, I grew a lot, you know, just understanding, you know, the NBA game, you know, the, the speed and just overall just getting used to, like, the new schemes of the, of the Mavs offensively and defensively. And, you know, I feel like I've grown a lot. Is there a lot thrown at you? In uh, short amount of time? Yeah, a lot. Head spinning or no? Um, not anymore. When it, when it, when when we first started practice, and when we the first couple of days before something, yeah, it was a lot. But as you play to it, you're starting to get you know used to it and everything. Uh, Coach Darley mentioned that um, like when looking at things you could continue to grow on, uh, your execution deep on drives, like decision making. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think there's any part of that that can continue to improve? Absolutely. I mean, you know, every part of my game needs to improve, but. As Coach Dudley said, especially, you know, my ability to drive, you know, I know I'm going to get by my guy, and it's about reading the next guy to help her, um, the big guy, and just making the right read. And honestly, just keep, you know, learning more reps. As, as I get even more reps at this play at this level, I mean, I'm going to get even better at it. It seemed at times when you were playing out of, like, handoffs, like you were the recipient of the handoff, mm -hmm. the Hawks went under. Um, do you feel that taking pull-ups, uh, maybe more as your career goes on, could be an important part of your development? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this is something that, you know, um, you know, I have to read. I'm a, I'm a player that reads the defense. You know, if a defense goes under, then I, I'm gonna shoot it. You know, um, you know, if, they were, if they're not able to stay in front of me, then I'm gonna get to the rim. But it's really a part mid-range three. I want to be able to get a three-level score at this level. So, yeah. Jared kind of talked about what you said. Already just happened to the experience. What's been your conversations with Jared Dudley? And what kind of advice has he given you just to get him here for the next year? Um, you know, honestly, he's just been he's just been you know great in terms of just helping me you know understand you know the schemes of the way the mass play you know yeah just keep going say play your game you know. Uh, be a lot, bring a lot of energy to this team, and then you know, be confident. You know, to you push the ball, you know, attack the rim, you know, rebound, and you know, he's been great in terms of just helping me. You know, as I'm learning, you know, the t defensive stuff and just offensively, where to position myself, when to cut, when not to cut, and all that, those different things. So he's just, he's been great help, and he's just, you know, preparing me and just by telling me, yo, be yourself, man. Just go out there, play your game, and be aggressive, and make the right play. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. No, no, she's she's playing great. I mean, no surprise to me personally, but um, but no, she she's out there, um, and just to see her um, do what she's doing at that level and and represent, representing Canada, um, it's great to see. You know, I'm super proud of her. It's just the start of the tournament for her. So. Because from Canada too, we just mentioned. Uh, World Cup roster Yeah. I mean, uh, representing my country is always something that you know I would lo I would love to do, and you know, representing the Olympics is something that you know I plan on doing uh, in my career. And you know, right now that roster is stacked. You know, they have great players, and you know, I think what they have the World Cup now is that is that correct this year? I mean, I think they're gonna do some serious damage there, and. You know, it's exciting times for the Canadian national team. What did you think of the little guy and his fearlessness? Oh, uh, Jelly? Yeah, no, Jelly. He's, no, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a board scorer. He's a, he's a, he, he's made, he's made, he's a hooper. You call those guys hoopers. He just comes in the game and finds a way to get buckets. And but I'm, I'm happy for him, man. He deserves it. He put in the work. He plays the right way, and you know, he makes shots. And you know, uh, for him to come here and and do what he did, I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty cool to see. As you enter like the rest of the off season, are there any players that you may look to kind of study when you watch a film? Yeah, I mean, different. I mean, different guys in the league for sure. You know, <clears throat> the best two-way play, two players in the league. Um, you know, uh, OG Pascal, um, uh, Mike Mikael Bridges. You know, guys that are wings, uh, that are elite wings. Um, and just any guy that you know that's has success in the league that I can you know watch and learn how they move, how they drive, how they. This, they, they play defense because even though, you know, we know how to play basketball, the NBA game is a little different than a college game. So we got to just be able to see different players, you know, and see how they move and just try to grow and watch a lot of film. Um, how would you sum up your 
some of the experience. I've never started off a pit. Um, took some time to get on the board. Mm -hmm. um, we're playing a lot at the beginning, but just gradually we're getting you in. I was just gradually. And I think you played like most of the game last time too. So yeah. I think I think it was great. Um, you know, like you said, coming in, the first game was really like a first practice. I only had one practice before the first game. It was just like a feel out game for me. And every game I just felt more and more comfortable in the in the offense and you know defensively and then I was just starting to, you know, to start playing my game and just play to my advantages and my strengths. And as the game went on, I, it just slowed down for me. Everything slowed down. I could see, you know, the gaps, driving angles, you know, went to, you know, uh, space out and shoot, push and transition, make the right reading. And as we get, you know, the last couple games in this game, I just, you know, felt more comfortable out there. And I felt like, you know, I played really well. And, you know, it was the reason why we went 4-1, and one, you know, um, because every game we, we got better, my team got better. And, you know, that's, that's where it's at. And I'm glad of what we did. I'm happy with what we did here. 10 days and 11 days and five games uh, describe the growth process you think you've uh, experienced so far you know you just got to be able to just adapt in the court you know just kind of learning the fly be able to pick up screening coverages being able to pick up defensive coverages being able to learn the plays learn actions you just kind of learn the pace of the game the the pace of your teammates and just be able to just flow together and just build chemistry what, did the ref give you an explanation on that goal temp? No, no, he did not. So, you know, I was, I, I was asking him about it, but he said he was going to tell me he never did. So I'm just, you know, it was, if, it was, if it was a bad call, it was a bad call. If it was a good call, it was a good call. We move on, next play mentality. Oh, that's a very, that's a very hard comparison. I feel like he's amazing on defense, but he's also aggressive on offense. You know, he could shoot, he could get to the rim, he could give you a little... One dribble, spin, roll. One dribble, spin, half spin, pump fake, get into your body. You know, I just feel like he's a, he fits the modern game. You know, I don't have a player to compare him to, but you know, he's going to be he's going to be a key factor and a key player in the next role. Uh, Jared Dudley mentioned that um, you that you could improve at like the channel one coverage. Mm -hmm. uh, where are your thoughts uh, so far as you kind of like learned that and have worked that in you know, just being able to know that I gotta, I gotta move my feet a different way. I gotta keep my feet a different way. I gotta be able to turn my hips, make sure I'm not opening up and committing to one side. Being able to play two and two and a half people. You know, this was the first time I was, able, I was able to play five on five since March. So being able to just pick it up, being able to get the rest off. I feel like I played, uh, I played channel one. I played our, our, our screening defense pretty well. But you know, there's always room for improvement. You know, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna say it. I probably played a. Uh, a C plus or a B minus in our screening coverage, so I could definitely improve and definitely get better. What uh, coverage do you feel like you're most impactful right now as you continue to learn? Uh, that's really hard. You know, I feel like uh, a lot of teams are really confused whenever we hit them with ice screens and we hit them with switches. You know, being able to have the the ability to do both is really well. So I wouldn't say that I'm a, I'm uh, honing in on one because both of, the reason that I'm here is because of both of those things. Uh, how would you describe like Pope Max filling like a low man role and just his general like defensive execution? Man, you know he's a he's a little more. Uh, he's able to he's able to be in there. And he's able to just put his put, push his weight around. You know, it doesn't matter if you're seven foot, six ten, two fifty, two sixty. He's in there. He's throwing elbows. He's in there making sure you can feel his presence. He's getting boards. He's boxing people out. You know, be able to just be that much of a defender and being able to rebound like that and be able to throw your body around like that is really hard to find. It seemed like us really kind of progressed. You guys played more out of handoffs and like getting touches at the elbow. What were your thoughts uh, playing out of that? Just being able to throw little, throw new concepts, being able to understand new concepts on the fly and being able to just, if the defense is going to do one thing, we're going to change it up and do a different thing, you know. And once we figured out that the DHLs and the, uh, the handoffs were getting us open open looks, open passes, open shots, you know, that's where we kind of focused in on that and that's when we kind of ran with it. Was your head spinning at the start with everything that threw at you? Or is it still? Uh, you know, you can't, you can't, have, you can't even say it was a, it was a lot because you know you got to be able to be used to it. You know, we're walking into a new environment, you're walking into a newer organization. You got to be able to just be a sponge. And I feel like I was a pretty good sponge over the past week and a half. As you spent time in, uh, like, you know, here in Las Vegas, with your teammates. Have you done anything to kind of build camaraderie uh, with your siblings? Just being able to be around each other every day, you know, practices, the bus ride, walking to team meetings, being able to just be in the same environment, being able to just talk to one another, joke with one another, and being around one another just builds that camaraderie and being able to build that trust. Tell, tell me a little bit about the, the growth process you, you felt like, feel like you've gone through um, so you're finishing this, in this camp. Uh, I mean, yeah, definitely, definitely a really big growing process. Um, First game, didn't play at all. Uh, second game, 
played a little bit. Third game played more. Fourth game played more. Fifth game played more. I feel like, uh, I mean, I just took advantage of my opportunity. I feel like that, that's what I definitely started to do, and I feel like everyone saw that. Um, I mean, just thankful to God, thankful to the Mavs organization for believing in me and even allowing me to be here. But, um, I mean, I just continue to grow every game. Uh, the game sort of slowing down for me more and more, and I feel like from the first game, well, probably from the second game to this game, it, feel, it, it definitely should look like that as well. But, uh, I mean, just blessed and, and thankful for the opportunity. I mean, Mavs fans are going to want to know. Do you shoot like this all the time? I mean, go watch my UAB highlights. I shoot. I think I, I mean, I've done it for two years straight now, so I feel like that's what I do. Um, I mean, I shoot the ball really well. And obviously every night you're not going to make shots, but for the most part, the most nights I, I, I can shoot the ball. Did you already sign the uh, E10 contract? Yeah, I have an E10 contract, yes, sir. Uh, what helped you to stay sharp and ready when you didn't receive time early on? Um, like I said, my, my, my story, when I was younger, I never was the guy. I never started on a team until my, what I would say, I didn't even start in a high school team until my senior year of high school. You know, so I've, I understand how to play a role. I know what it takes to, to win. And, and whether you don't play, whether you're the water boy, whether you're um, a manager or coach, a uh, player who's on the floor or the star of the team or the head coach, it all plays in, in a part into winning. So I understand that whatever my role is to winning, that's what I'm going to do. So whether I got to sit on the bench and cheer my teammates on and be the loudest, loudest cheerleader, I'll do that. If I got to play 30 minutes and be the, be the guy to where I take all the shots and do everything I'm supposed to do, I'll do that as well. I'm, I'm just a winner at heart. And, and whatever I need to do to win, that's what I do. Uh, it seemed like in the second quarter you guys used like a matchup zone on defense. Um... What were your thoughts on that? Um, yeah, just we, we've uh, put it in, in training camp and worked out on it a little bit the first couple of practice. Very similar to Miami. Took a little bit of that. Something I just wanted to try out just to throw you know, teams off. That team was first in three-point and first in offensive rebound. We gave up ten in the first half. That's why we were only up two. And then we cut that, only giving up three, I believe, uh, two or three in the second half. That's why I could extend the lead. But uh, the zones there, to, you know, especially with uh, teams that can shoot threes to be able to shoot the type of threes we want them to shoot. Um, credit these guys, though. That, that, that's an NBA-style offense. They're unselfish. They play very, very well. I thought it was going to be a lot closer game. I told the guys. Uh, but credit them, those guys without Hardy. Um, guys getting more of an opportunity, AJ, Taze Moore, these, some of these guys, get Jelly showed you what he could do. And so for me, as a, I, I pride myself as a player coach, put these guys in positions I think that they're, they're going to be successful, and I, and I give Jelly a little bit more leeway to, to do what he does best. Um, it seems a uh, common theme throughout summer league has been focusing on like ice coverage and low man rotations. Yeah. What were your thoughts on how that's been executed now that like, the five games are over? Um, I, I thought it was up and down for Lively. I thought low man for uh, Omex was phenomenal. I thought Derek, uh, which we're going to have all August and September work on him, has to work on his channel ones, which, which basically means you're up at the level of touch of the screen with the no roller behind. So when the big gets out, you have to get, get, uh, go, you have to get out, and then you have to meet the guard in the restricted area called Veer, which is basically a switch, and meet him at the rim. Uh, it's, it's one of the toughest things to do in the NBA, especially with these talented guards, and that's why we drafted them. And it'll, it'll take a, it'll take a, some time, but he's going to work at it. But um, you got to ice. You got to put them on that sideline so you have three defenders on the backside to be able to low man and X out and get, get into your rotations. But I mean, man, listen, we only had they had one practice before. We had two practices. We've been here two off days, four and one. I'm just happy for the opportunity. I want to thank Mark Cuban, Nico Harrison, and uh, Jay Kidd. It's my first real time. I want to do it one more time next year, and then, then I'll be ready to go. What do you think? Uh, what do you think of the odds of Walker ending up in y'all's or somebody's training camp this year? Well, I I, I think with Jelly, didn't, I think we, didn't, we, didn't we give him an E10? I think we gave Jelly an E10 if I'm not mistaken. So he he's gonna be with us until until uh, until we say otherwise. I, I, that's what I think for him. If he's serious about it, you, you gotta listen to the Van Fleet podcast that he did. Any six foot guard underneath has to pick up full court has to be tough and be able to be scrappy and be a pest defensively and has to be able to shoot the three. He can shoot the three. He's not a pest defensively. So he has to work on his lateral of getting underneath them. Kyle Lowry, charge taker, Van Fleet, quick hands. And so that's something him, he has the offense, has to work on a little bit of decision making because he's so small in there to find the corner, to find the late lob. But defensively, if he can just work on that, which is, which is tough. I mean, if anyone can play defense, man, it's, it's tough in this league.
Does he shoot like this all the time? He does. He, uh, pre-draft camp, had the highest Mavs 100. I think out of 100 shots, I think he made 84 or 85 at the all pre-draft camp. It's one of the reasons why he was here. So his shooting is, uh, is one of the number one thing. Cuban loves him for that. He had a couple uh, passing plays. Like there was a sequence where he like uh, swung the ball from one corner to the yep. other corner, and then he hit the. Step, step up hammer, step yeah. up hammer. We did a little ATO for that one. It's um, they're gonna switch it. Usually the one four they were switching. I said no matter what, drive that baseline. Silva did a good back screen for Brandon and made it. it was one of the few good ATOs. I'm just trying to work on that every day and watching film of all the top coaches of what works with our type style. But I mean, listen, Jelly wakes up naturally a guy who can put the ball in the rim. He, he has a swagger that new. You know how the New York guys are talking trash, having a good time, make you laugh. He's been a joy, and so uh, I always try as a coach give you something to take with you that uh, can help you either get to the league or make more money overseas and for him it's defensively being a pest. How would you rate the overall growth of, of uh, Omax and Lively? After. If I had to give it, I would say uh, 7 out of 10 for Lively, which he has a, a ways to go of, of learning of our, our, our defensive coverages being up. I think his condition will only get better. Omax, a 9 out of 10. Omax is phenomenal. Um, he's ahead of the curve. Uh, Lively will get there. Lively has potential. He's going to be a starting center of Dallas Mavericks one day. Uh, but Omax is just right there. The 3 and D, those guys, it's easier, easier to transition. You switch. Offense, he's a bull going at you. Has to work on his decision making a little bit when he gets in that paint, but um, myself and Dallas Mavericks organization are happy for what they did. And if they, and if, it, and if, they if we would, wasn't, I would tell you here. You said he's ahead of the curve on that. Why do you think that? Well, someone I played, I know how uh, um, a first round draft pick is supposed to be. I was 22. Um, defensively, he's an above average defender right now. He has the built and the size. He has the mental capability of knowing when to switch, knowing when to be low man, when to show his hands. Offensively, he doesn't do too much. He either shoots catch and shoot or drives. He um, doesn't shy away from contact. Usually at that age, if you look at his body, already a man's built. So you can only imagine when he's going to be in two, three years in the weight room. Um, and for the, the, the nuances is right now is just learning the, the, the mental game and, and learning the film of watching the players and their tendencies. And that will come. And that's my job, Sweeney and his coaching staff, to get these players ready. Talk to, uh, you've heard so much comparisons about to Tyson. Any old match comparisons that you see? <clears throat> that's a great question. To put a little pressure on this guy. Um, I don't want to short him on some of this stuff like that because offensively he has a, a, a bigger package and stuff like that. But I mean, just I would say a bigger Marcus Smart. I think of that in a way his size is built. Um, uh, Marcus Smart made himself into a pretty good shooter. He's a little more erratic, but I think he has that defensive capability to be able to guard multiple one through four. I think offensively he's, he's going to have a better driving ability, but I don't even think it's a, it's a great comparison uh, that, but I think he just has the built to be a, a all-team de defensive player one day in this league. And so offensively, it's as good as how he wants to put the work in.